हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर सीरीज ऑन डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स वेर इन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मोस्ट कॉमनली आस्ट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन इन डिजिटल डिजाइन इंटरव्यूज एंड फॉर यूर इन्फॉर्मेशन आई हैव गिवन द लिंक ऑफ पार्ट वन ऑन द टॉप राइट कॉर्नर ऑफ द वीडियो एंड नाउ लेट एस गेट स्टार्टेड विद पार्ट टू फ्रेंड्स आई हैव मेड अ स्मॉल चेंज इन पार्ट टू आई विल गिव यू इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन and i will wait for 10 seconds so that you can think of its answer and after 10 seconds i will reveal you the answers let us get started question number 1 is design a positive level sensitive d latch using 2h21 max your time starts now Let me explain you the functionality of D latch. It has two inputs D and enable and two outputs Q and Q bar. When enable is high, whatever is the value on input D will be passed to Q. But when enable is zero, Q will retain its previous value. Or we can say the value of output Q is latched. Now, if we want to design a uh, the same latch using 2h21 marks so we need to give uh, enable at the select line so when it is zero we know the output should be latched so let us give its output to the zero signal and this only will be passed here and when enable is one whatever is the value of input d will be passed to q if you want to create negative level sensitive latch then apply D input to input line zero of max, and the feedback loop should be on input line one, because here when enable is equal to zero, whatever is the value on uh, input line should be passed to Q, and when enable is one, the output should be latched. Question number two is convert a D latch into J K latch, and your time starts now. As per the truth table of J K latch, it has three inputs: enable, J, and K. When enable is zero, and irrespective of the value of J and K, output Q should be latched. So when enable is one, then output Q depends upon the value of J and K. When enable is one, and J and K both are zero, output should be latched. When enable is one. J is zero, K is one, output should be zero. Similarly, when J is one, K is zero, output should be one. Similarly, when both J and K are high, output should be inverted of its previous value. And let us see how it is implemented using uh, D latch. This circuit reacts as a D latch, as we saw in question number one, and this is its enable signal. Let us use the same enable signal. For J K latch enable, so when this enable will be zero, output will be latched to its previous value. When enable is one, then only it depends upon the value of J and K. I have considered four H two one marks, which has two select lines. I have applied the value of J and K to both the select line. As per truth table, when J and K both are zero, output should latch its previous value Q. So when J and K both are zero, line number zero is going to pass to its output. Let us apply it as Q only. When J is zero, K is one, output should be zero. When J is zero, K is one, this line is going to pass to the output. Let us make it zero. When J is one, K is zero, output should be one. When J is one, K is zero. Input line two is going to pass to its output. 
and let us apply it to 1. When j is 1 and k is 1, output should be inverted of its previous value. When j is 1, k is 1, this line is going to pass to output and let us make it as inversion of its previous value. So this is how we converted a d latch into jk latch. Now let us move to question number 3. In this question, you have to tell the greatest negative number which can be stored in a 8-bit computer using 2's complement. And your time starts now. And the correct answer is minus 128. Let us see how. If we see how many binary numbers we can create from 8 bits, it will be 2 raised to power 8, that means 256 numbers. So from 8 bits, we can create 256 numbers. Now, as per 2's complement method, half of these 256 numbers are used for positive uh, numbers and half of the numbers are used for representation of negative numbers. So from 0 to 127 are used for positive numbers. 0 to 127. This 0 at the MSV place represents the sign bit. Now the other half numbers are used for minus 128 to minus 1. That means for negative numbers. So minus 128 is represented by this number and minus 1 is represented by this number using 2's complement method. Here the M 1 on the MSV bit represents the sign bit. Now let us move to question number 4. In this question you have to tell how many flip flops are required to implement mode 8 counter. And your time starts now. Friends, its answer is very easy. Actually, mode 8 counter has 8 stages and it counts from 0 to 7. And as we know, number 7 can be represented by 3 bits as 1, 1, 1. So, we can say maximum 3 flip flops are required for implementation of mode 8 counter. Because its maximum number 7 can be represented by 3 bits. This is the fifth and last question of this episode. And the question is convert the following mod 8 counter into mod 6 counter. This is a mod 8 counter and we need to convert it into mod 6 counter. And your time starts now. Okay, let me explain its answer. I have drawn its tooth table. Uh, it has uh, three flip-flops, Q2, Q1 and Q0. And mod 8 counter has eight stages. So it counts from 0 to 7. Now we want to convert it into mod 6 counter. That means it will have six stages. So it will count from 0 to 5. So we need to cut these two stages, 6 and 7. When the count reaches 5, again we should come back to the count 0. To do this operation, I have put some extra circuitry with blue and gray ink. So this is a AND gate. So I am applying Q2, Q1 bar and Q0 and making a an signal in it. So that means when Q2, Q1 and Q0 will be 1, 0 and 1 in it will go high otherwise it will remain zero in all the other states for example 000 001 010 011 and 100 this in it will remain zero and i am applying this inner signal to the mux 2h21 mux i have placed three muxes before all the flip flops 
when this unit is zero this signal is going to pass this signal is going to pass to this flip flop and this signal is going to pass to this flip flop that means the operation will be unaltered there will be no impact of this circuitry but when q2 q1 q0 will go 1 0 and 1 that means 1 0 and 1 in it will go high so now because we want q2 to come to 0 q1 to come to 0 q0 to come to 0 because we want the next stage to be 0 0 0 as we have used t flip flops q2 is 1 and we want it to go to 0 and in it is high so i am applying one here this signal is going to pass to this t2 so i am applying here one because i want my state q2 to toggle similarly here q1 is already zero and i want it to go to zero only and this line is going to pass to t1 so i am taking it as zero only because i do not want to toggle my q1 and for q0 it is on state 1 and i want it to go to zero and when in it is high this line is going to pass to t0 and i want q0 to toggle from 1 to 0 so i will make this signal as high one very important point when in it is high we are going to use this marks and we are passing this 1 to this t0 and if we see we are already applying one here and we are again applying one here so we can avoid this marks so this way we can reduce area i have removed this mux here so this will be our final circuitry with optimized area with this i am going to end this episode hope all of you would have liked this video if you like my video please press the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues and to have the notification of similar videos do not forget to subscribe our channel thank you so much